where it is, but listen, on to more pressing issues and more interesting issues from a Rio Ferdinand and Five perspective. Man United takeover is imminent. Wow, big, big words there from Rio Ferdinand. As he said, from a Rio Ferdinand and Five point of view, the takeover imminent. We're hearing the Qataris, the Qatari bid is the one that's taken over. It's the one that's going to be accepted and it's the one that is going to go through. Hallelujah, man. We can't wait. Please let this happen. Please let it be true, man. Let's look how long this has gone on for. The Glazers have dug their hills in and they're going, obviously it seems like the biggest bidder. The person that bids the most money is going to get the club, which is normal in negotiations, but they've certainly dragged their hills. And I just wanted this to be sorted out and resolved before the transfer window really kicks in. We're getting to that point now where the transfer window start opening and it start, moves are starting to happen. Things. What, what do you make of what Rio Ferdinand has said here? Go back to it. I'm going to play it again just in case anybody missed it. Just listen to it again. Man United takeover is imminent. imminent. We're hearing the Qataris. The Qatari bid is the one that's taken over. It's the one that's going to be accepted. And it's the listen, the one that's going to be accepted. I hope this is true. I know every rival watching is going to say, no, this is nonsense. It's going to be Sir Jim. And it could still be. I'm only reacting here to what Rio Fernandez has said, of course. Contacts in the game, contacts at Man United, contacts in the media as well. You couple that in, and I have been keeping my eye on this. It's going to be interesting to, to see what happens today. But the Man United stock price again yesterday stabilized and rose again. That is two days running after the supposed fake news story came out that Manchester United um, were going to be taken over by the Qataris. It was played down as fake news from an account in Cardiff, of all places. But the stock market hasn't reacted to that claim that the news is not true. Investors, you know, stockbrokers, and many others have continued to invest in Manchester United. It's seen, it's, it's, the thought is that if you own stocks in Man United and it's announced that the Qataris are the owners, the share price is going to skyrocket before they get the chance to take it off the market. So people are investing now. The last two times the media kind of announced that the preferred bidder may be Sir Jim. Or that the Glazers might stay and take investment, the share price decreased. That's the theory surrounding that. That may have no connection to what Rio Ferdinand is talking about, but I do want your thoughts. I do want your feelings. How do you see this takeover going? Do you think Rio knows what he's talking about here? Do you think he's got credible information? Do you believe that it's heading in that direction, or is this just, or is this just more speculation? an opinion based on everything he's read on social media, the same as the rest of us, because I'm hearing all those opinions out there. And of course, I want to come to you, the football terrorist community, to give me your thoughts and your feelings on this. I hope Rio is bang on. I hope Rio is right. Qatari owners in at Man United, reaffirming the standards, improving the infrastructure, improving the stadium, making sure we're run impeccably well to get us back to the very peak of our powers on a footballing front is absolutely key. Not to mention clearing the debt, more money, but that money being spent wisely. Man United fans have never moaned about the amount of, amount of money we spend, other than the fact that we waste it on poor projects. But let's see what happens here. By the way, people, make sure you're liking, make sure you're following us on Spotify, scan the QR code on the screen, or click the link below. Up next, I want to get your re reaction here. Mark Goldbridge talking about Man City looking to hijack the Declan Rice deal. Let's take a little listen here. Other than that, your fear for Arsenal on this one. You know, there's something about Arsenal that they have had some bad luck. They had this last summer as well with Rafinha, Chelsea came in, then Barcelona. And, um, you know, Arsenal have put a lot of work into Declan Rice. They can rely on the fact that Rice might just fancy the Arsenal, stay in London, you know, might like the, the, the way they've wooed him, so to speak, seduced him, whatever you want to call it. They have put a lot of work in there and there's no doubt that Declan Rice is impressed by it. But the problem will be if Pep Guardiola says, I want you in my midfield in a team that's just won the treble. You get to play with Jack Grealish and John Stones, who you know from England days and Phil Foden. And, you know, you're going to come straight into that team and be a superstar of the future. Yes, people will say there's no credibility in that. It's Manchester City, but it doesn't stop Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva. The players I've just mentioned who are English. That's not going to be on Declan Rice's mind. It's going to be Pep Guardiola winning the Premier League, you know. Very good points raised there by Mark, I think. 
Arsenal fans, are you fearful now that it's been formally announced that City have entered the race? We had Dean Jones on the terrace earlier who broke this news 10 days, 14 days ago that City will be making a concerted effort for him. Now, we know that Arsenal are leading that race. 110%, we know they've been leading it. We've been told many times by the media that they've agreed personal terms or personal terms have been no problem. But this is Manchester City. This is Man City that are making these strides for him. Treble winners. Three-peat winners. The best manager in the world, the best squad in the world, the best team in the world coming in for you and offering you the chance to be part of that journey. It's massive. And for me, I think there should be fear. But what Arsenal need to do is very, very simple to me. They need to react quickly. They need to react swiftly. They cannot allow themselves to remain in the ocean. The longer they stay out there treading water on this deal, the more chance there is that the big blue shark with the Jaws music playing in the background will sneak up behind them and take off their leg. Or in fact, maybe gobble them up, munch them all together and take them out of this race. They need to go back. They've, they've offered 90 million, 80 plus 10. They need to go back and offer 100, maybe more than 100. Better structure, better deal. They need to turn around. Listen, 90, 90 million plus 10, 90 million plus 15, 95 million plus 10, whatever it may be. Get West Ham to accept so they can finalize the medical and get Declan Rice to sign on the dotted line. Because if they do not do that, if they stay in the water, as I say, there's a chance that Jaws is going to eat them for breakfast. Get Declan Rice off the market, put him in an Arsenal shirt, and then go and focus on your other targets. Because I think Goldbridge pulls on a brilliant point here. There is always that worry, always that concern that this could go wrong. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on that in the comment section below. Up next, I want to get Rory Jennings' opinion on Mason Mount. Let's take a little listen. I haven't been overly uh, fond of the way that Todd Bowley has come in Clear Lake. I haven't been overly fond of many decisions. But I would say that this decision, in my eyes, is actually the worst of the lot. Because not only because of the player, not only because of what it means on the pitch, but because of what it represents. It's a statement of who Chelsea are. It's a statement of what Chelsea are after. It's a statement of our ambition. Our ambition is obviously dwindling. You don't let players like Mason Mount leave if you want to win the biggest trophies. Mm -hmm. You don't let one of your best players leave if you want to win the biggest trophies. And what you certainly don't do, if you have any principle and understanding of the rivalry and DNA of Chelsea Football Club, you certainly don't allow him to leave to strengthen a rival because Chelsea and Manchester United could be neck and neck going for a European spot next year. The end part, I completely and utterly agree with. We could be rivals again this year in, in, in terms of the league. We're rivals overall because City and, and Chelsea, Chelsea and Man United have gone head-to-head -head many, many times in the Premier League era. I can clearly see that Rory's angry. And there's many Chelsea fans that are angry about this decision. But should he be? That's the big question I want you, the football terrorist community, to answer for me. I'm still someone that's not sold on Mason Mount coming in. There is a part of me, though, that thinks Klopp wanted him, Poch wants him, Tuchel wants him, Arteta wants him, Ten Hag wants him. There has to be a player in there. People are also saying the same about Cap Kai Havertz. He's average, but Pep want, is looking at him right now. Arteta wants him, Tuchel wants him. What are we missing as fans? Is Rory Jennings right here? Is allowing Mason Mount to join a rival the worst decision that Chelsea can possibly make? Is it showing a lack of ambition? Are Chelsea moving away from being a team you consider title contenders, potential to win the Champions League? Are they becoming a mediocre side again? Are these decisions, even though they're spending big money, are these decisions taking Chelsea backwards? I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on this and all the other stories we've spoken about on this show. Hit the like and the share button, subscribe, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.